good morning today we are going to discuss about specific energy and critical flow so this is me dilruba kem let us consider an open channel here the water is flowing because of the gravitational force due to the channel bottom slope okay so let us see the cross section of this flowing water so here we have a channel bottom which is having a slope say s0 and water is flowing over it so when we apply bernoulli's equation that is equation for conservation of energy let us consider two sections 1 1 and section 2 2 and z1 is the distance from datum surface to channel bottom but datum surface is an arbitrary surface that assumed surface that we have taken and from which we will measure the depth z1 and y1 is the depth of the water and v1 square by 2g is the velocity head or kinetic head of this flowing water so we know we have studied this before that for analyzing a flowing water we can analyze the energies of this flowing water by considering two sections at 1 1 and section 2 2 so when we apply the bernoulli's equation we know the bernoulli's equation is v1 square by 2g plus y1 plus z1 is equal to v2 square by 2g plus y2 plus z2 plus h of where h of is the energy loss between these two sections so if h of is energy loss what is this term v1 square by 2g plus y1 plus z1 and v2 square by 2g y2 plus z2 that term is known as energy per unit weight of water okay so the, this term is taken as this term is the energy per unit weight of water now let me take the channel bottom as datum instead of an arbitrary or assumed set datum i am taking channel bottom as datum so let me drop the z1 and consider the channel bottom as datum then the total energy is termed as specific energy so what is specific energy specific energy is the energy per unit weight of the flow or liquid with respect to the channel bottom or it can also be defined as energy of the flow with reference to the channel bed okay so we have the equation for total energy on open channel flow that is e is equal to z plus y plus v square by 2g now when we consider the channel bottom as datum the z value will become zero because the datum surface is coinciding with channel bed so the z term will become zero and our energy term total energy will be y plus v square by 2g and i said when we consider the channel bottom as datum the total energy is termed as specific energy that is e is equal to y plus v square by 2g this is the equation for specific energy now when we consider the specific energy we can see it contain depth of flow and velocity head so this is the equation for specific energy e is equal to y plus v square by 2g and we know we have a equation discharge is equal to area into velocity from this equation i can write v is equal to q by a right so i am applying this equation in this equation of specific energy then the equation will become e is equal to y plus q square by 2g into a square since v is q by a v square will become q square by a square thus we can say for a given discharge the specific energy in a given channel section is a function of depth of flow alone see for a given discharge specific energy is depending upon the depth of flow okay
Now let us represent the equation of specific energy graphically. For that I have taken depth of flow as y axis ordinate and abscissa as specific energy x axis taken as specific energy E. And when I draw the curve which relate specific energy and depth of flow the curve will be like this. And when I draw a straight line with an angle 45 degree with x axis and y axis then you can see the a ac is the curve limb okay this curve is acb and the limb ac is asymptotically meeting the x axis asymptotically means it is likely to it is closely to meet but it will meet at some point infinity. And the limb BC, when we consider the limb BC, this is also asymptotically coming close to the straight line that I have drawn. Okay. Now, this curve is specifically for a discharge Q1. Now, we have a discharge Q1. And when you look at this curve, you can see the point C which is having minimum specific energy and the x value of this point will represent the specific energy so this is the minimum specific energy that can be provided for this discharge and the depth of flow corresponding to this minimum specific energy is known as critical depth and it is represented by yc and the velocity at this critical depth is known as critical velocity okay so the depth of flow corresponding to minimum specific energy is termed as critical depth okay so for point C on the curve which has minimum specific energy thereby it indicates that below this value of specific energy the given discharge cannot be acquired or for a given discharge the minimum specific energy will give you, will get at the critical depth. Okay. Now let me consider any specific energy other than this minimum. Let me say E1 here. And I draw a straight line to the curve. And I can see the straight line is meeting at two points in the curve. Let me name it as P1 and P2. So P1 and P2 when I draw horizontal or when I find out the depth of flow corresponding to P1 and P2 it is seen that P1 have a depth of flow Y1 and P2 have depth of flow Y2. So P1 and P2 which is a representation of spe same specific energy have different depth and this these depths are known as alternate depth. That is, two depths which have same specific energy is known as alternate depth. And from the figure you can see Y1 is less than YC and Y2 is greater than YC. Since YC is this point and Y1 is less than YC and Y2 is greater than YC. Okay, so let us say this curve is known as specific energy curve and let us conclude these points that is in a specific energy curve there is one point named C which has minimum specific energy below which the given discharge cannot occur and the velocity corresponding to the critical depth is known as critical velocity and the depth corresponding to the minimum specific energy is known as critical depth and alternate depth is the two depth possible depth of flow of water one which is greater than critical depth and other less than critical depth at which a given discharge can occur with the same specific energy so all the specific energies other than minimum specific energy will have two alternate depth understand okay now let us evaluate this curve, specific energy curve again. So let us see the relation between the specific energy and depth of flow. 
so i have taken critical depth as reference so depth of flow when it is greater than critical depth see the depth is increasing in this direction so depth of flow when it is greater than critical depth you can see the specific energy value is increasing specific energy value is increasing towards right side so the limb bc when we consider the limb bc the depth of flow increases specific energy value is also increases now consider the depth of flow which is less than critical depth that is when we consider the limb ac when a specific energy value increases but the depth of flow is decreasing so we can say either way that is for when we have increased the specific depth of flow the specific energy value decreases see when we increase the specific uh, when we increase the depth of flow that is we have to move in this direction the specific energy value will decrease so we can conclude that for in depth greater than critical depth specific energy value increases and for depth less than critical depth depth less than critical depth specific energy value decreases okay now let us consider the velocity change for that i am considering two points p1 and p2 both of the points have spe same specific energy right so this e1 is the specific energy of p1 and p2 and specific energy equation is p is equal to v1 square by 2g plus y1 for point p1 and specific energy value for p2 is v2 square by 2g plus y2 which is also specific energy e1 and let me name it as equation number 1 and equation number 2 and from this equation we can see both have same specific energy so y1 1 equal to 2 that is equation 1 is equal to so equation 2 so i can write v1 square by 2g plus y1 is equal to v2 square by 2g plus y2 but look at the figure you can see y2 which is greater than y1 right so from the figure it is clear that y2 is greater than y1 so in order to keep this equation if y2 is greater than y1 we have to reduce v2 since g is same in both both side so when in order to keep this equation equal y v2 will get reduced and v1 will increase so we can say v1 will be greater than v2 and y2 greater than y1 v1 velocity at point 1 will be greater than velocity at point 2 now look at this figure we can say y2 is the biggest depth which is greater than yc which is greater than y1 right so y1 is the smallest depth yc is greater than y1 and y2 is greater than yc and what is about velocity here we have found that v2 is less than v1 so vc which will be come in between v1 and v2 so we can write v2 will be less than vc and v1 will be greater than vc clear so for depth greater than critical depth velocity will decreases velocity will decreases velocity will be less than critical velocity and for depth less than critical depth velocity will be greater than critical velocity so i am just writing down for depth greater than critical depth velocity will be less than critical velocity and since the velocity of the flow is less than critical velocity that type of flow is known as subcritical flow and when velocity is greater than critical velocity 
this type of flow is known as supercritical flow so you should keep that in mind supercritical flow will occur when the depth of flow is less than critical depth and velocity is greater than critical velocity so critical velocity if velocity is greater than critical velocity that flow is known as supercritical flow and when velocity is less than critical velocity the flow is known as subcritical flow so let us conclude all these say y is the depth of the flow and yc is a critical depth then when depth of flow is greater than critical depth the specific energy increases see in this in this section specific energy will increases with the increase in the depth but velocity will decreases or velocity will be less than critical depth and the flow is known as subcritical flow and for depth of flow less than critical depth that is in this section when depth of flow is less than critical depth specific energy will decreases with increase in well depth of flow and velocity will be greater than critical depth therefore the flow in this section is known as supercritical flow so subcritical flow is also known as tranquil flow is the flow at depth of flow greater than critical depth or here velocity will be less than critical velocity and supercritical flow is the flow occur at the depth of flow less than critical depth and here the velocity will be greater than critical velocity i hope you the concept of specific energy and critical flow is clear if you have any queries please mark it on the comment section below thank you